Coming up next on This Week in Torrance. The launch program is bringing in something we rarely see in Southern California. And one cancer fighting organization starts its battle all over. We'll tell you how they are running against the disease. And if you missed it last week, former council member Cliff Newmark relives his memories and dedication to the city. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. The City Council had a tough decision to make this week. They had to choose who replaces former Council Member Cliff Newmark, and now the decision is final. Heidi Ashcraft has been appointed as the newest City Council Member. Ashcraft has been a Torrance resident for 35 years and has committed herself to serving the community. Her honors include the El Camino College Woman of the Year and the YMCA Service Above Self Awards. She's taking the place of Newmark after he was voted onto the El Camino Board of Trustees during the November 5th elections. Ashcraft is only filling the role until the 2014 elections in June when she will run again to keep her seat on the council. A total of five city council seats will be up for grabs in the upcoming election. Most people take a leisurely stroll from pier to pier, but recently a group of people were on a fast-paced mission to raise funds. A group of Torrance residents raised $50,000 for schools at the Skechers' fifth annual pier-to-pier -peer friendship walk. This more than doubles the last year's total of $20,000. The money comes from the $25 registration fee as well as corporate sponsors. More than 10,000 walkers took part in this event, which stretched from the Manhattan Beach Pier to the Hermosa Beach Pier and back. At least a million dollars total was raised at the walk for kids with special needs and education. The Torrance team's earnings will go to schools within the Torrance Unified School District. The schools will, re will receive the funds by February 2014. After 9-11, updating airport security hit the priority list. Now the city wants to extend those security updates to Zamparini Field. The city council will spend almost, the city that is, will spend almost $1 million to include 13 new security cameras, vehicle license plate readers, 8-foot fencing, gates, lighting, and an upgrade to the key card reader system currently used. While the new license plate reader has raised concerns among residents, it will assist Torrance authorities in identifying criminal activity at the airport. The new public works project will start in January 2014 and is scheduled to be complete by May. The City Council met again this week. Here's a recap of your Community Matters. Congresswoman Maxine Waters and the City Council congratulated Max Kaplan for achieving a Congressional Gold Medal Award. The award is the highest honor for youth and recognizes individuals who have dedicated hundreds of hours of service in their communities. The medal is given to those who earn it based on guidelines on Public Law 96-114, the Congressional Award Act. They also honor Diana Matovich of the General Services Department for her 27 years with the city. Matovich started with the city in 1986 as a typist clerk while working at the Torrance Municipal Airport. Now, over the years, she has performed many crucial roles at the airport, including assisting with tenants and pilot concerns. The proclamation will be drawn at a later date. And Clifton Johnson was honored for his contributions and exemplary service to the Torrance community. Over the years, he has served with many nonprofits, including the Torrance Area. Chamber of Commerce, Schweitzer Learning Center, and the Torrance YMCA. He has also won many prestigious awards. If you enjoy riding the bus or taking the train, you'll have to wait a little longer for the proposed Torrance Regional Transit Center. The $21 million project, which will be located on a 15-acre site at 465 Crenshaw Boulevard, has been delayed until summer of 2015. The one-year delay is due to changes in the design so the city can save on cost and change certain elements in the original design. Officials say these factors were also the reason they decided to change architectural firms to one with more experience in transit design. They hope to have a new design completed by March or April, at which time they will take bids on construction. The goal is to have the entire project ready to start construction this summer. Torrance has not had a transit center since the Delama location closed in 2005. After the proposed adjustments, the city estimates it will save $3.8 million. Still ahead, Cliff Newmark takes a look back at his career as a council member. 
Plus, one of Torrance's oldest schools celebrates its 100th birthday. But first, here's the current temperature outside. All the preparation, the training, it all comes down to this. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. We have a job to do out here today. Some people think it's about muscle, but it's really about heart. A lot of heart. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. It looks like a lot of work is going into this. what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Every year, families in Torrance get to see Santa before he goes on his sleigh ride on Christmas Day. And reporter Faith Lee got a chance to see how Santa is brightening up kids' mornings. Are you ready to see Santa? This year, Santa's in town just a bit before Christmas. And he's quite nervous to see the kids because... This is my very first time being Santa, and I'm really looking forward to it. That goes the same for the kids. On this morning, more than 100 adults and kids dressed up to meet Santa at the Breakfast with Santa event. Although the city event has been going on for a little bit over 30 years now, it is still attracting many first-timers. This is my first time here. I just like that family gets together. Say hi, Santa! This event is one of the five seasonal programs for the whole family offered by the city of Torrance, and these kind of events always guarantee a good time. It's really a great event because it's really family-oriented. So we get a lot of the grandparents and parents and they come out with their grandkids and stuff. So it's really a positive experience. And many kids got a chance to tell Santa what they want for Christmas this year. I wanted a tree house. Well, if you're really good, we'll see what we can do. And although it is his first time being Santa, it looks like he has some big Christmas gifts to deliver on Christmas. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Faith Lee. Thanks, Faith. For more events like this, visit torrentca.gov. A winter fling at one local preschool means more than playing in the snow. Reporter Julie Chan finds out how educators are using it as a teaching tool. Yeah! Yeah! Principal Elaine Semple understands that no two kids learn in the same way. Some kids who academically are so great, but something like this is visually just huge for them. As the principal of Launch Preschool in Torrance, Semple understands the benefits of events like today's snow day, creating unique ways to teach her students who may not communicate, speak, or comprehend the way other students might. Some of the kids have what we call gravitational insecurity, where anything that's above what they feel comfortable, where their feet may not touch the ground, they get really nervous on. So by them having opportunities in our OT room, then once they come out here, they see that it may be something they can try. Launch is a public preschool for children between the ages of three and five who have been tested with special needs in their development. There are over 300 students enrolled this year alone. When we first came to the school, it was a shock, I would say, to um, us as a family, um, just with some of the uh, behaviors that we were um, you know, having to uh, come to terms with. And I do believe that uh, you know, a program of this magnitude has done nothing but, you know, had a positive experience. Parents like Ryan Jorgensen are thankful for programs like Launch. His son is learning in his own unique way, which will help make the transition to elementary school a much easier one. We try to provide opportunities on a kind of regular basis for something that's out of the classroom routine so that we can see how much challenge the kids are going to have. And despite the fun of snow and games, many of the activities planned for the day incorporated hand-eye coordination, sensory support, and tactile learning. 
and Semple hopes to make a difference in these students' lives just one snowball at a time. I love Reporting for Torrance City Cable, I'm Julie Chan. Thanks, Julie. While this public school provides education opportunities for special needs, all children can attend the school. For more information about the LAUNCH program, visit launch.tusd.org. The holidays are upon us, and one Christmas hero has come to town. Reporter Haley Skeen joins us with more. Hi, Jen and Ben. I'm here at the police station where Santa has just arrived, and he's about to pay a visit to some of the kids of Torrance. Take a look. Santa had some help this year from the Torrance Police Department. This is my first time going out, so I'm excited. This year, Gonzalez joined Santa on the sleigh float, but the 44-year-old tradition was a part of her childhood as well. I remember the, just the excitement of it and waiting for it when you hear them coming, so I know what the little kids are feeling. The nightly trek begins each year after Thanksgiving. The Torrance Police Officer Association funds the entire event, and each night, different police divisions volunteer to escort the float and hand out candy canes. The goal is to pay a visit to every family in Torrance, and many neighborhoods plan holiday gatherings around the stops. It's a great way to start the holidays and just kind of get everyone out and happy and be together. The float stopped at nearly every block along the night's route, each time greeted by a group of awestruck children. Because the tradition has been ongoing since 1969, many parents and grandparents say they remember waiting for the sleigh when they were kids. I loved it. It was a trip down memory lane tonight. And the community response is what makes it all worth it. You know, it's just so, so much fun to see all the kids when the sleigh comes out and they're just so excited. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. Santa will be out every night in the city of Torrance until December 23rd, and then he goes back to the North Pole to get your gifts, so you better be nice. For a schedule of upcoming routes, visit torrancepoa.com. Many organizations team up over the holidays to give back to those in need, and this time the elves are booting off the cold. Reporter Julie Chan has a story. Our motto was, uh, a man never stands so tall as when he kneels to help a child. And that's exactly what the members of the Delamo Rotary are doing this holiday season. Along with Payless Shoes and Head Start, an organization supporting low-income families, Christmas came a little early for this group of local children. It's amazing how many children there are in great need. Delamo Rotary President Ned Stromey and other members, along with West and North High School students, helped fit the kids for a new pair of shoes. Well, this is so much fun. So we have the high schools, we've got uh, naturally the Torrance Alamo Rotary, uh, the uh, parents will be here. We have the Mermaid, uh, Elena Galdina, we have Jump Bunch. Organizer Jerry Cohn brings local businesses together to make this event extra special for the kids, including an obstacle course of games put on by Jump Bunch, including a chicken toss. Others enjoyed face painting and balloons with a mermaid. We have been sponsoring this event for three years now, and it's um, very, very rewarding giving the shoes to children in need. Payless Shoes partnered with the Delamo Rotary to give each of the 50 children in attendance a brand new pair of shoes and socks. This is fantastic. This is providing shoes for the children that are the siblings to the children that we serve. Is it too small? Do you want to try something bigger? Mm, I think it's a little small. Siblings Danny Taylor, who's 10 years old, and sister Amy, who's 8, and little brother Israel, 7, each chose a pair of shoes and were happy to receive a party favor stocking full of goodies. Everybody helps out. They want to they wanna help out, and every year it just gets better. Reporting for Torrance City Cable, I'm Julie Chan. Thanks, Julie. Jerry Cohen has been touching lives with Project Shoe since the 1980s. One of the oldest schools in Torrance celebrates a special benchmark. Reporter Haley Skeen has details. Marion Osborne has fond memories of her years as a teacher. The look on kids' faces when they understand something. And it's like, wow, that's what's fun. Osborne taught for 30 years at Torrance Elementary the same school that she herself attended in the 1940s. And she says there's something about this school that kept her around for all these years. It's got more community spirit. That's basically it. Now retired, Osborne joined more than 100 community members in celebrating Torrance Elementary School's 100-year anniversary. 
Torrance Elementary was the fourth school to ever be built in the city, and a few things have changed over the past century. I think our standards have uh, they become more rigorous. I think the content and what the students are required to do has changed uh, a, a lot. But students say they're happy to accept the more challenging curriculum. It has math, reading, science. It also has arts. Arts are important too. When you're laughing, Most of the changes have been positive, but Osborne says some are hard to take. But the thing I'm missing is they say they're not going to teach uh, Hersey writing anymore. That's coming down from Sacramento. Uh, that breaks my heart. But one thing that hasn't changed over the years is the relationship between the school and the community. It's very accessible to communicate with the principals, with the staff, and especially with the teachers. And Osborne says that sense of family is why this school has thrived for a hundred years. Good things last. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. You can get all the latest information on TUSD schools on the web, including Torrance Elementary. To take a look, visit torrance.tusd.org. Cancer can be devastating, but some community members refuse to give up hope. Reporter Haley Skeen has the story. Cancer. The very thought can cause fear, but it can also motivate people to take action. I have two daughters, and I want to make sure that we can uh, eradicate this and other forms of cancer to protect my children. Sunshine lost first his wife, then his mother to cancer. But instead of turning to anger or despair, he chose to fight back. So we just keep the fight going so that we can help others. And that's the way they, they would have wanted us to do that. Sunshine found a way to do that through Relay for Life, an annual 24-hour walk. But Relay is more than a walk. It's a mission to raise awareness about cancer prevention and treatment. Sunshine joined other Relay members to celebrate life and kick off the 2014 Relay year. Money raised at the upcoming walk will be used to fund research by the American Cancer Society. When I was diagnosed 12 years ago, it was a whole different ball game, you know. I mean, now there's so much better treatments, there's so much different procedures that they do, surgeries, radiation before instead of after. You know, it, it changes, and, and the American Cancer Society has, you know, played a major part in that. And taking part in this organization gives people a sense of empowerment. You feel helpless, and this is a way that you can get in there and feel like you're doing something to support your loved one or friend. The efforts are slowly but surely paying off. But I think sometime, maybe not in my lifetime, but I think someday we will find a cure. Sunshine says thanks to groups like Relay for Life, he has hope for a brighter, cancer-free future. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. The Relay for Life walk will take place in April at South High School. Sign up at RelayForLife.org. Stay tuned after the break. Cliff Newmark talks about his experience on the City Council. But first, here's your five-day forecast. I am Chris Burke, an actor who happens to have Tau Syndrome. Join me in watching some great stories about inspiring people with Tau Syndrome. Somebody asks me what Down Syndrome is, I tell them it's just an extra chromosome in her body and it just makes learning a little more difficult. I just hope many people with Down Syndrome can follow their dreams and the passion of what they love to do. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I think she has more abilities than I do. Just to emit this incredible love that everybody was drawn to. I thought his story was amazing. I thought it needed to get out there to inspire other people. My name is Annie. I'm a Salem brother. I'm my name is Serena. This is Bates. And this is my great story. Great story. My great story. This is my great story. You can watch at ndss.org slash stories. Welcome back, everybody. we got a lot of great events coming up. Here's a look at what's on the calendar. If you have some mad scientists running around the house and you'd like to take them out for some fun, the Exxon Mobil Foundation is sponsoring an event for children. Bring your children ages 5 and up to the North Torrance Library on Wednesday, January 8th or on Thursday, January 9th at 4 p.m. No registration required, but space is limited. 
For questions, please call the library at 310-323-7200. Winter spirit is filling the air, and if you love dance and music, West Torrance High is having their winter dance concert. Now, you'll see beginning, intermediate, and advanced students performing at the James Armstrong Theater in the Torrance Cultural Arts Center. That's located at 3330 Civic Center Drive. Show performances are Thursday, January 9th and Friday, January 10th, beginning at 7 p.m. Tickets are just $8 per person. If you have further questions, you can call 310-781-7171. Speaking of music, we'll keep following the holiday trend. Enjoy an evening out with Janet Klein and her parlor boys who are entertaining the audience with obscure, lovely, and they say naughty songs from the 1910s, 20s, and 30s. Now, during the entertainment, dinner is being served by the Red Car Brewery. The event begins at 7.30 p.m. on Friday, January 10th at the George Nakano Theater. If you are interested in attending, please go to JanetKlein.com or call 310-781-7171 for more information. And if your children enjoy watercolor, you won't want to miss Watercolor for Kids at Madrona Marsh Nature Center. That's located at 3201 Plaza de Lamo. The event takes place on Sunday, January 12th from 10 a.m. till noon. Local artist Jennifer Siegel will be on hand. For more information, call 310-782-3989. If you are ready to ring in the new year and looking for family fun and activities, the YMCA will host an open house on Sunday, January 12th. During the open house, they will hold membership enrollment from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. They are located at 2900 West Sepulveda Boulevard. For more information about the event or any other activities at the YMCA, visit ymcala.org slash TSB or call 310-325-5885. Now let's go to the sports desk with Juan Hernandez for a sneak preview of what's to come. Juan? Hi, Jen and Ben. As you can see, we're a little festive here in the Sports Desk studio this week. It's our last week from the studio here in 2013, so we've got a lot to pack in the show. Basketball, soccer, but also when you see us again in 2014, a group of young athletes at West High will be making school history when they hit the mat. We're going to introduce you to some trailblazers this week, so be sure to watch us on the Sports Desk every day at 4 p.m. and 9.30 here on City Cable 3. Back to you. Thanks, Juan. For those of you who missed uh, it last week, we recently said farewell to someone who has been a big part of our community for many years. And now former council member Cliff Newmark shares his years of memories with us. Mark Andrews has the story. Cliff Newmark is a driven man. He's driven to do his best, whether in community service or in the public sector. It's something he has learned as a child from his parents. Well, my, my family's always been active in various civic affairs. My grandfather was a leader in United Synagogue, which is the movement, the conservative movement of, of, uh, of, 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 of Judaism. The, and he helped found his own synagogue. My mom was a teacher, public teacher her entire career. And my in-laws were extremely active. Uh, um, my mother-in-law was a teacher as well. My father-in-law was literally, uh, he worked in the aerospace industry as um, He's a doctorate from Harvard focusing on trying to protect our country. But they were always very active in the community, especially in the arts. This would help shape his core philosophy and future goals, believing in the importance of public service. Newmark would go on to earn a Juris Doctorate degree from Cal Berkeley and two master's degrees, including one in public policy from Princeton. I thought that my training, my work would be helpful, but frankly it's always been, some, it's been kind of a long-standing dream of mine. Uh, I was a staff member in the state senate in 1991. I was part of a senate fellows program where they basically take people who recently graduated from college and stick them in uh, legislative aid positions. And so when I worked there as a staff member, I saw that government really could act to represent people and accomplish good things. And so I thought it would be really interesting to be able to be one of the decision makers to help serve in that leadership uh, rep and representative role. And so it was that kind of dream and thought combined with my educational background and my professional background that made me think this was something that I should throw my hat in the ring and try to do. Help make a difference. This is a phrase he uses a lot and has applied it to his work with the American Red Cross. 
the last 10 years, Newmark has risen through the ranks from being a director of blood recruitment to CEO of blood services and now as its vice president, a trait which he feels makes him an effective legislator. I think it requires a certain degree of patience because there's a process, uh, and the process is not simply government bureaucracy. The process is being able to hear all sides so you can make the right decision. In business, you simply, the executive, the chief, chief executive or an executive will say, a manager or owner will say, this is what we're going to do and we're going to do it. And they, you know, a good business executive will listen, but then they, they will make decisions. Whereas in the public sector, decisions are made more slowly because we want to make sure we hear from everyone. Because really the decisions we make are representative of the entire public. Having served on the council for six years, Newmark is now embarking on a new direction. This past November, he was elected as a trustee of El Camino College, but he says his time on the city council was his most fulfilling, and he hopes he'll be remembered as a results-oriented elected official. Some of the things that I brought forward, such as the energy efficiency work where we saved um, up to $300,000 a year and obviously provided significant benefits to the environment by reducing our electricity consumption, or setting up the seminar series Seniors Don't Be Scammed, which educated seniors on a variety of internet and telephone fraud, um, fraud scams that are out there, or um, finding funds for another police officer, or setting up the business incubator, the South Bay Entrepreneurial Center. All those things are things that I move forward with because based on my experience, I thought these were things that would benefit the public. Newmark is able to balance his very busy professional life with his family life. He's married and has two young children, a one-year-old and a four-year-old, and he says he couldn't do it without their support. However, what is his next step politically? Newmark is not sure, but he does say the path of public service will be one he'll continue to take. As we told you earlier, the Torrance City Council has replaced former council member Newmark. Heidi Ashcraft was recently appointed to fill that vacant seat. Well, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and be sure to like our page to get the latest updates on what's going on in Torrance. Well, that's it for us on This Week in Torch. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.